So what is an amine? It is a compound that has one or more organic groups bonded to nitrogen. So here we have a nitrogen and um, this one shows one organic group. Um, these other two bonds could be to two hydrogens, one hydrogen and another organic group or two organic groups. We classify amines as primary, secondary or tertiary. So a primary amine is going to look like this but it's going to have two hydrogens bonded to the nitrogen. A secondary amine is going to look like this. We're going to have two of these um, R groups, okay? So in other words, nitrogen will be bonded to two carbons and one hydrogen. And then we have the tertiary amine, and here we have nitrogen bonded to three carbons. So there is no hydrogen bonded to the nitrogen. Let's take a look here. We, we refer to amines as derivatives of ammonia. If you look at ammonia, it's just a nitrogen bonded to three hydrogens. An amine has at least one organic group bonded to the nitrogen. So an example of a primary amine would be this right here. So we have the nitrogen bonded to two hydrogens and then we have this ethyl group. Notice there is a lone pair on the nitrogen atom. That's also the case here for this secondary amine and this is drawn out here. We have nitrogen bonded to these two carbons and there's one hydrogen. That's what makes it a secondary amine. And then a tertiary amine right here and nitrogen is bonded to three carbons. So these three alkyl groups can be the same, they can be different, uh, we can even have a benzene ring, okay, or an RL group if you will. If a fourth group bonds to nitrogen, and that would be through the lone pair, what we would have is a quaternary ammonium ion. And so we would have a nitrogen bonded to four groups now, okay, four of these organic groups, and it would have a positive charge. Think of the ammonium ion, right? We have um, ammonia, right? And remember, ammonia has this lone pair. Well, if a proton bonds through this lone pair, then we have the ammonium ion, and this is positively charged. So the quaternary ammonium ion has the four organic groups bonded to it. One of the organic groups bonds through that lone pair and we end up with this positive charge. So the groups bonded to an amine nitrogen, they can be alkyl groups or RL groups, in other words, a benzene ring. And you might also see other functional groups. So for example, this one here is aniline and this is a benzene ring with the amino group and this is a primary amine. We have the nitrogen, it's bonded to this carbon in the ring here and the two hydrogens, it is primary. Here we have n naphthyl amine and this is a secondary amine. Again, we look at the nitrogen, it's bonded to this carbon, it's bonded to a hydrogen and another carbon, so it's secondary. And here we have triethylamine. This is a tertiary amine. Nitrogen's bonded to three carbons. And then here we have a quaternary ammonium ion. With the, it has the positive charge on the nitrogen and the three organic groups. This is acetylcholine. This is a neurotransmitter. So this is a quaternary ammonium ion. Let's get into the nomenclature. So primary alkyl amines, all we do is add the suffix amine to the name of the alkyl group that bears the nitrogen. So in this case here, we have an ethyl group and we would call this ethyl amine, okay? So those are easy to name. The primaries are very easy to name. A secondary amine and tertiary amines with two or three identical groups are named by adding the appropriate prefix, die or a tri to the alkyl group name. 
So for example, this here, the nitrogen is bonded to a hydrogen. This is a secondary amine. We have two ethyl groups. This would be diethyl amine. Now, in the case where the R groups are different, we name them as an N-substituted derivative of the primary amine. The parent primary amine has the longest carbon chain, and then we use the prefix N to identify the substituent, or substituents, I should say, on the amine nitrogen. So this is the longest chain here. So there are five carbons. We name that as a pentyl amine. And we have a methyl group bonded to the nitrogen. This would be N methyl pentyl amine. Okay. In this case here, we have our longest chain for an alkyl group is this propyl group. This is a propyl amine. And we have a methyl group on the nitrogen, another methyl group. So we have a dimethyl propyl amine and we use two ends to indicate the two groups being bonded to the nitrogen. So this would be NN dimethyl propyl amine, okay? Now what if we had something like this? We had a methyl group, okay? And let's just go ahead here with the um, propyl group and let's put an ethyl group here, all right? So this one here, this would still be a propyl amine, okay, and ethyl and a methyl group. Ethyl has priority, so this would be N ethyl N methyl propyl amine, okay, this would be one word. The simplest aromatic amine is aniline, and you already know this from previous chapters, so that's this one right here. So in this case here, we have a benzene ring. This is, we name this as an aniline, okay, because of that nitrogen. But here we have this propyl group. So this would be an N-propyl aniline, okay? When the amino group, that NH2 group, is present as a substituent in a molecule, again, we call it an amino group. So in this case here, we have an acid and we also have an amino group. We name it as an acid, so this would be butanoic acid, four carbons. And on carbon number four, again, the acid has priority over the amino group, so this would be carbon one. So on carbon number four, we have an amino group, so this would be four amino butanoic acid. I didn't mean to draw a line through that. So four amino butanoic acid. This is just an example here of adenine, and we're going to see this later. Notice we have these two rings and this amino group. And this is a base that we find in DNA. We'll, we'll go ahead and take a look at that later. But you're going to find a lot of these amines okay, do contain the rings. So let's go ahead and name some of these. This here is a primary amine and this is called propyl amine. This here, we have two methyl groups, that would be dimethyl amine, okay? And here they want us to draw a structure for NN dimethyl aniline. So we go ahead and draw the benzene ring, the nitrogen, and we know that bonded to the nitrogen because of these two ends here are two methyl groups, okay? And then here, they want us to provide the condensed structure for butyl amine. Again, butyl amine is a primary amine. We have the amino group here, and then the four carbon chain, which is the butyl group, okay? So let's take a look here. Identify the following as primary, secondary, or tertiary amines. So I look at the nitrogen here, it's bonded to a hydrogen, and this ethyl group. This is a secondary amine, and this is called N-ethyl cyclohexyl amine. Remember, this is a uh, this would be a cyclohexane, and uh, we drop the E, so this would be a cyclohexyl amine. And on the nitrogen, we have an ethyl group, so N-ethyl cyclohexyl amine. 
And here we look at this, we have a primary amine and look at this here, we have this propyl group, but the nitrogen is bonded to the central carbon here. So this is isopropyl amine. So here they want us to draw the structure for N-methyl ethyl amine. So the ethyl group we have here, okay, we draw our nitrogen and then we know that we have this N-methyl, so we have a methyl group here and then this would be a hydrogen. So we have a secondary amine. Some properties of amines. Amines are weak bases and that's because of that lone electron pair on the nitrogen atom. So that lone electron pair can form a bond with a proton or a hydrogen ion from either acid or water. So here we have methyl amine and when we put that into water, what's going to happen is it's going to pick up a proton from the water and it's going to become this positively charged species and we're left with the hydroxide ion. So amines act as weak bases, just like ammonia. This is very similar to ammonia in water. We can also react the amine with an acid. Again, it'll pick up the proton from the acid. Remember, there is a lone pair of electrons here. And what we're, here we have this methyl ammonium ion, okay? Just like up here, this is a methyl ammonium ion and the chloride ion. So this is just like any acid base reaction we've talked about before with a weak base, okay? Hydrogen bonding, as you have guessed, the amines are capable of hydrogen bonding with one another. Well, think about it, you have hydrogen bonded to a nitrogen for both primary and secondary amines. So they're able to hydrogen bond with one another and they're also able to hydrogen bond with water molecules. So here we have another example. These are both secondary amines. This is a secondary amine hydrogen bonding with water and this is a secondary amine uh, molecule hydrogen bonding with another secondary amine molecule. As a result of this intermolecular hydrogen bonding, our secondary and primary amines are going to have higher boiling points than similar size alkanes. Amines are usually lower boiling than alcohols of similar size. Why is that? Well, if you remember electronegativity and polarity, that nitrogen-hydrogen bond is going to be less polar than the oxygen-hydrogen bond. Nitrogen, as we know, is less electronegative than oxygen. Therefore, it's going to form weaker bonds with the hydrogen. Tertiary amines do not form intermolecular bonds and are lower boiling than primary and secondary amines. Also lower boiling than alcohols of similar molecular weight. So a tertiary amines do not experience intermolecular hydrogen bonding. However, all amines, primary, secondary, and tertiary can hydrogen bond with water molecules. And that's because of that lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. Amines with up to six carbon atoms are soluble in water. Volatile amines have very strong odors. They smell bad usually like ammonia, fishy, or like something spoiling, like garbage. Simple amines, small amines, are gases at room temperature. Other common amines are liquids. The smaller amines are very irritating to the skin, eyes, mucous membranes, and they're toxic if you ingest them. Some complex amines from plants, which are called alkaloids, are poisonous, and we'll talk about those in a bit. And we'll find out that many drugs are amine compounds, okay? This is just a table showing the boiling points of some simple amines. And here we compare with ammonia. Ammonia has a boiling point of a negative 3.3. Methyl amine, negative 6.3. Ethyl amine, 16.6. .6. So um, notice the more carbons that are added, the higher the boiling point. Here we have aniline, very high boiling point of 184.1. Okay. Um, 
so here's some uh, secondary these were the primary amines some secondary amines again the more carbons the higher the boiling points and then the same with the tertiary amines heterocycles these are rings that contain atoms other than carbon so heterocyclic nitrogen rings are common in natural compounds that we find in plants and animals we'll see that when we talk about the alkaloids later heterocyclic nitrogen compounds they can be aromatic or non aromatic so here's an example of a cyclic amine called piperidine and this is non aromatic and here's pyridine this is an aromatic amine okay so piperidine this is a structural element you're going to find in a lot of drugs and it happens to be the main active chemical agent in black pepper and again just like all amines it's a weak base so it's used as a solvent pyridine talk about the pyridine bases later when we talk about dna and we find this in antihistamines vitamins that are derived from pyridine your uh, B vitamins. So we're, we're gonna see this one a lot, a little bit later when we get to the biochemistry. Um, here are some amines. One of them is nicotine. And uh, so we see that these are amine compounds. Notice here we have this um, heterocyclic ring here uh, that has a nitrogen. Quinine, uh, this is an anti-malarial drug. Uh, this is also an amine compound. And tryptophan, I think you've all heard of tryptophan. This is an amino acid. We'll be looking at these later, but here we see the um, amino groups. Some other heterocyclic nitrogen compounds here. Um, yeah, quinolone, uh, indole, um, uh, the pyridine and several others but you see that they all have that nitrogen and they all have rings so I already said that amines are weak bases and again we have that lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen so it's able to bond with a proton very easily so I would expect that you would be able to write reactions for these um, acid base reactions we have the base here, the ethyl amine, reacting with water, okay, and uh, we produce this ammonium ion, if you will, ethyl ammonium ion, and the hydroxide ion. Here we have a secondary amine, diethyl amine, in water. Again, what's going to happen is it's going to pick up a proton from the water, and we have this diethyl ammonium ion and hydroxide ion and then the same here for this tertiary amine and look at these these are reversible reactions so the reverse reactions the ammonium ions can react as acids in the presence of bases in order to regenerate the amine so the positive ions that are formed when we add a proton to an alkyl amine are named by replacing the ending amine by the ending ammonium. So here we have the ethyl ammonium ion. This is from ethyl amine. Here we have the, this has two propyl groups, the dipropyl ammonium ion. Notice the positive charge. And this would be from dipropyl amine. Ammonium ions are also formed in the presence of hydronium ion. So here's hydronium ion, right? Or again, uh, by the addition of a proton through that lone pair of electrons. So here again we have ethyl amine with acid to produce the ethyl ammonium ion and diethyl amine to produce diethyl ammonium ion and triethyl amine to produce the triethyl ammonium ion. So let's go ahead and write the equation for the acid base equilibrium of dimethyl amine and water. So we have the diethyl amine. Here's the nitrogen. Or I should say dimethyl amine. Okay, we have our hydronium ion. And what's going to happen here is this proton 
is going to leave here and the proton will form this bond through this lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. So we're going to end up with this. And then we have that and the hydrogen and we'll be left with a molecule of water. So obviously this was our base, hydronium ion, the acid. The conjugate base for hydronium ion is water. And here we forgot our positive charge. We do always have a positive charge on those ammonium ions. And then this would be the conjugate acid of the dimethyl amine. Okay, so this is the dimethyl ammonium ion. It is the conjugate acid of the base dimethyl amine. It turns out that non-aromatic amines are slightly stronger bases than ammonia, and aromatic aramines are weaker bases than ammonia. So here's what we have. Non-aromatic amines are the stronger bases, then comes ammonia, and aromatic amines are the weaker bases. So if I give you something where I have three or four different amines and ask you which is the stronger base, then you would tell me the non-aromatic amine is the stronger base, okay? So amines are present as ammonium ions in body fluids, and that's because blood and body flu fluids are aqueous, and uh, so they have to be present as ammonium ions. This is histamine, and here's serotonin. This is a neurotransmitter that we find in the brain, and it's an amine, but again, it's in the body fluids and it exists as an ammonium ion. Let's go up here. Ammonium salts or amine salts, if you will. These are ionic compounds that are composed of an ammonium cation and an anion. So an amine salt, just like any other ionic salt, ionic compounds or salts, remember, it's odorless, white, crystalline and solid. The ammonium salts are more soluble than the neutral amines and that's because they're ionic. They will dissolve. You have this large amine like this, this tributyl amine. This is not going to dissolve in water. But if we react this with acid and get the tributyl ammonium chloride salt, okay, this tributyl ammonium ion is now water soluble. So we convert these neutral amines to salts so that they are soluble in aqueous medium. So how do we name these salts? You combine the ion names. So for example, here we have methyl ammonium and then a chloride ion. So methyl ammonium chloride. Here we have the methyl ammonium ion. So that's the cation and the chloride ion is the anion. So you name it just like you would any other salt. This would be methyl ammonium chloride. This part here is the cation. This part here is the anion. Again, ammonium salts are more water soluble than amines because they're ionic. Turns out that if you treat an ammonium salt with a base, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, what you're going to get back is your amine and a salt and water. So for example, Benadryl, that's an amine, and it's an antihistamine that a lot of people are familiar with. And it is dispensed as diphenhydramine hydrochloride. So this way it is soluble. Quaternary ammonium ions have four organic groups bonded to the nitrogen, and they're positively charged. This is benzalkonium chloride. This is an antiseptic. So salts are, the salts are quaternary ammonium salts. What's nice about this, these salts, they are not affected by pH. Why is that? That's because they have the four groups bonded to the nitrogen. There is no hydrogen on the nitrogen that can be removed by a base. So they're unaffected by pH changes.
let's talk about these compounds called alkaloids. And these are naturally occurring nitrogen containing compounds and they're isolated from plants. They're basic, very bitter, a lot of them are poisonous. Alkaloids are produced by animals, bacteria, fungi, and plants. Again, they taste bitter. In high doses, they can be toxic to both humans and animals. They are physiologically active. For example, caffeine is a well-known stimulant, as is nicotine. Quinine, used to measure bitterness, is also used as a treatment for malaria. Caffeine and nicotine, again, they're widely used, they're stimulants, and they contain amine heterocycles. So we see that in both caffeine and in nicotine. A few poisonous compounds, again, these are also alkaloids. We have the sconine, and that's extracted from poison hemlock. And way, way back when, in ancient times, they used this as a poison. Atropine, you might have heard of this, that's also a toxic herb, and it's known as deadly nightshade. It acts on the central nervous system. It's used in medications, uh, very small doses, and it's mainly used to relieve the cramping of the digestive tract. They, again, back in ancient times, they used it for suicide and also to poison people. Solanine. This one here we find in potatoes and sometimes tomatoes. And it could be really toxic in high quantities, but not the amount we find in a potato. So when you have potatoes where you have that green, those green patches, you should always peel those off, okay, because that's where the solanine is found in the potato. Here's an example here of the atropine. Look at the structure. Okay, you have this structure here. Here you have this cyclohexane ring, and notice here there's a bridge. Okay, you have this bridge there, but you can see this here is an amine, you have this nitrogen here, and then solanine. It's even more complicated type molecule, but again, this has an amine group. Again, these are considered the alkaloids. That's it for amines.